but like the training sessions, that's also where you're the, the guys who worked the, the promotion that was associated with it. I would have said the local circuit, but there were like two places. And wouldn't you know it? If you worked for one, you probably weren't welcome at the other one at the time because oh, of course. that always <laughs> makes sense. Even though these uh, places are also like two hours apart, you know, business is really going to be affected <laughs> any scrape. Uh, but it was also where the, like the guys would come in to get their reps. So like there'd be the beginner's class. And then after your beginner's class, like once you, you were deemed far on enough, you'd be added to the rest of the class. And that's where the boys would come in and get their reps in and then work on stuff and all that type of business. Since you brought it up, this isn't, you know, working with the timeline, but I am curious about that because there's always those politics with local companies. If you work here, you can't work here. If you do this, you can't do that. And you're almost never paid to not work those shows. So that's an interesting little development. And I can understand, you know, from a promoter's perspective, they'll have the argument, like, if you're 30 minutes away or less and you're working this show... And then you start working this show, well, you're not going to have as much value because you're being double exposed. Or if you're working a different gimmick or if you're working heel here and baby there, or if you turn on your partner there, I can understand it to an extent. But at the same time, you're not paying these guys enough to not find work and not try to get better. So where do you land on that? Man, I have a, I, I'm generally speaking real, real hard pressed about that like is when i started it didn't when i started one it didn't make any sense to me and i worked both places and it never really seemed to affect me and generally speaking that's sort of uh generally been my approach to it is uh i will definitely hear someone out and if they make a solid point if they they can make their case to me then they might be able to change my mind about uh, this place or this promotion or whatever and if they can fine Mm-hmm. But by and large, I can't think of many places that I can think of off the top of my head that, like currently, that do that sort of, like, if you work for them, you can't work for me sort of thing. I've always been of the mindset, especially especially when the kids are, like, young, young, and they're learning. Get work, right? Yes. Like, is, like why wouldn't you want these people to, don't get me wrong again. I understand there are some shows that even when you're starting, you'd be like, oh, guys, I don't know about, but that's trying to look, but even that yeah. you're going to have value, even in those, mm-hmm. on those shows as well, you will figure out sometimes, sometimes the show is all about the lesson you learn. You know, sometimes, sometimes the lesson you learn is the friends you made along. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I get what you're saying though. But, yeah. Sometimes that's how you sort things out. I've always been one that, like, unless there's a very strong reason, like a really good reason why that argument can be made, then for the most part, I feel try to work as many places as you can. And then I said, as you, as popularity or whatever grows, then if you want to start cherry picking, absolutely. There does be need to be a line, I think, generally speaking, where you move up and onwards, ideally. But when we're learning, you got, eat yeah and that that's always an interesting conversation too because there is the point where at what point do you work these especially the smaller companies of maybe a lesser Mm -hmm. reputation and less and people who they might have experience but they're not necessarily good experience but that that could be good like you said early on but at what point do you Stop doing that, A, so you can open up your schedule for the chance of better bookings, and B, so you're not risking your health with people who might not be the safest. So I think that's a call you sort of got to make on your own. You got to kind of look at your calendar. Or when enough people are like, hey, man, I don't know if you know this, yeah, but you don't need to be on that show. And once again, that doesn't necessarily mean that the show is the worst, but... So there's so, levels. So, there's yes, levels. yes. In everything, there are levels. And there's a lot of levels in indie wrestling and pro wrestling as general. So it's not like a slight yes. to move up. Not at all. And I feel like I said, as long as you just be a professional and handle your, or do your best to be a professional and handle your stuff the way you would generally want to be handled. That's how I've always thought about it. I, I, I generally try to do my best to be accommodating and to be 
professional and what's going to help overall. Makes sense. I feel that's what makes everything work better. And that's what I would generally tell folks to try to do. Just try to handle your stuff proper on the way out. And there, there are times to move forward. No, that makes sense.